Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mindset Mastery Moments with Dr. Elisa White. Today, I am thrilled and I have waited weeks to finally get to the moment where I have this exceptional guest. Listen, he is a powerhouse, and I was so excited when I was able to meet him on LinkedIn. I mean, his personality and his gift for words and how he spoke was definitely interesting. I'm like, who has this much confidence? No, I did not say that this individual was cocky. I said he was very confident. And nothing gets me excited about meeting someone who's confident and knowing their true value and worth, and most of all, understanding and being clear about their purpose and going after it. So I am going to introduce you to an episode that we are calling Unveiling the Mindset, the Right Mindset for Success, that is. Today, our special guest, I'm going to have them come up to the stage and you'll learn more about them. Mr. Ernest Moss (laughs) Sr., Coach Big E is in Mindset Mastery Moment Studio live. We welcome you, brother. Uh oh. Hey, I appreciate you, Queen. Like, Mama, we made it. We made it to the top. We here with Dr. Elisa. So, appreciate you. Appreciate you. I can't wait to uh, bless your audience and uh, bring some big energy in the room, you all. Get ready. That's exactly what he brings. He brings big energy. And my friend and brother, Mr. Ernest Moss, I want to tell you a little bit about him and you will learn so much about him as we go along. Today, we have again, the CEO that is also the soul of WTF Academy. And I am not going to tell you what WTF stands for because I know y'all are thinking that Dr. Elise is cussing, but wait till you find out what WTF really means when it comes to Mr. Rock Boss. He is affectionately called Coach Big E, as you heard him call me. He's a driving force behind transforming lives of teenagers and most importantly, their parents. Now, are you ready for this insightful, in, insightful episode of Mindset Master Moments and a conversation that is going to rock your soul and get you aligned with the right mindset for success. Let's talk about yes. you, Coach Big E, because you're the man of the moment. You're the man of the moment of Mindset Master Moments. Can you tell us a little bit of what got you on the path to success? When did you know what you were created for? Oh, it's beautiful. And thank you again. I have to give you your flowers. Before I talk about me, I definitely want to talk about you, if you don't mind. Uh, I saw your uh, website and it said Mindset Master. And I thought, wait a minute. I'm, I'm the master of mindset. What is this, right? Let me see. And I'm like, look at this queen. She's popping it. I said, oh. So, of course, me being who I am, I jump right into your DM. Hey, we need to link up. Right? <laughs> right? Because it's the same, I want to say the same mindset because everyone is unique. And I let everyone know that they're one of one. You're not to be compared with anyone. So, Dr. Lisa, you are one of one. And when you're one of one, there's no price tag anyone can put on your value. So thank you, Queen, for this platform, for this podcast, for everything that you're doing, the global movement that I'm a part of. And thank you again. Oh, it's it's amazing. So I definitely want to give you your flowers. Oh, thank you so much. And I am honored to have you in our movement and have you be one of our, our global impact envoys, which is one of our leaders. And you bring in all this wonderful work that you're doing. Like it was right when we met. And I'm telling you all, slide into the DMs for the right reason. That's what my brother right. did. He was not on some joke and some nonsense. He was like, I see you and we need to connect. And it was boom. And I saw him. So I get people sliding in my DMs, but not very many people have a true purpose to it. I'm not saying you're not supposed to slide into people's DMs. I'm saying slide in for the right reason. You're looking for a wife, find one there. And be clear, don't play no games. If you're looking for a business partner, slide in the DMs. 
If you're looking for collaborating and energy and growing and learning, slide into DMs, but slide in with a purpose. And so I was blessed when you slipped right in there. I keep telling people slide into DMs, but they don't listen. And now we get to take the world together, right? We're on the yes, same team. <laughs> you know what's so funny is that my, my uh, uh, operations manager, uh, Coach Dimitri, Black Crypto, shout out to my guy. One of my goals for <laughs> for 2024 was to become global because I put my goal out on Facebook and a lot of people looked at me like, what? But my goal, my lifetime goal is to impact over a billion people. Ooh, come on. A so easy. A with a, that's with a B, not an M. Yeah. I'm talking about a Billy. <laughs> <laughs> a billion, a billion, and there's all there's less than eight billion people on this earth, and all I need is a, a billion. And once one. I do that, yeah, yeah, just one billion. You know, once I do that, then you gotta be done with me, and I can go on about my business. But uh, <laughs> we have some work to do. Um, and you know, I was questioning. They said, "How how do you want to impact people's lives? Because impact can come in so many forms." And my goal is to ensure that everyone that hears the sound of my voice, their success blueprint is impacted by raising it higher. I guarantee that they're going to be raised higher when they get in contact with me. Everybody. And, and I mean the people at the gas station, the people at the grocery store, the, the, the people who dry clean my jacket, everybody I come in contact with. If I don't do anything but give them this big old Kool-Aid smile <laughs> and brighten up their day, and people have told me that before, is that it's the little things that can impact so many if you just allow the little things to impact. Because we want the big stuff. We want things to be glorious and, and, and you know, huge and big events. We want to be usher at the Super Bowl and you know, you ain't built to be usher at the Super Bowl right now. I'm sorry. You can get there, but that's not where you are. So if you can't do anything else, you can definitely impact the lives of everyone around you simply by smiling. Because as my mom told me when I was a kid, I was walking around face all balled up. She said, boy, you too ugly to be frowned up like that. You need to smile. I've been smiling ever since she told me that. I can't help it. I smile if I sleep. <laughs> I do. I can't. I, it, that's just me. <laughs> and I lost your uh, audio, doctor. If you can hear me, I can't hear you. But I can keep going if you want me to. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so all this time I was laughing and no one heard my laugh. But I, no, I, I, didn't I, don't know, I don't know about the ugly part, but I definitely know that a smile, when you frown, it is ugly when people are frowning and they don't have a yes, smile on yes. their face. I'm not saying everybody needs to walk around like you and I. But I am saying you should try it. <laughs> and here's why. Let me tell you the science behind the smiles. And, and people can Google this, Siri this, whatever they want to do. But I want you to look this up. The body is built on chemicals. So we all know this is a big soup of chemicals. We have all types of chemicals in this. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to spit out any big words that you might not know. Just simply look this up. The muscles in your face, when you smile, sends different chemicals through your body that will allow your entire body to be healthier. And you will feel better every single day by simply smiling and what i tell people is this i have to get my problem if you so mad you can't smile <laughs> because it's the same muscles it and you'll is. still like and you'll see right. these chemicals to your brain and it'll overall make you healthier by simply yeah. smiling so you're impacting not only those around you 
but yourself, man. Right? Simple smile. Tupac and uh, Scarface said it best when he said, Smile. You yes. black. What you frowning for? Smile. <laughs> Come on now. And here's the thing about that. You're absolutely right. And that's why people get in, in a kapuffle about the fake it till you make it. And when you brought out the pen and showed us how to practice it, you're actually retraining your brain to smile, even if it takes you doing that. And I have this thing I always tell audiences, when you feel like you're lost, you're not sure, just smile and look up because you might not feel like you have a smile, but when you start to practice doing that, your brain doesn't know the difference and it releases the right chemicals, as you said, to put yes. you in flow of becoming a person that smiles and looks forward to the brighter day. But even in the present, you have to give yourself everything. It's a muscle that you train. So thank you so much, Coach E, for sharing with that. So what I want to ask you is, Everybody's heard me use the WTF. <laughs> Everybody's heard me say WTF. And they're like, why is Dr. Elisa saying what the? No, yes. it means something else. Can you take us to where did you even come up with it and what it truly means for when you say WTF? And man, you named your entire academy after that. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, most people think a certain thing when they see WTF and they think, what the, and I'm not going to cuss at you. And I wanted to change the acronym and change the energy of the acronym and think, what's the formula? Because everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to raise their level of success. And some people strive so hard. They, I'm doing all of the right things. I'm a good person. How many times you hear people say, but I'm a good person. Most of the people that say, I'm a good person, they know they <laughs> need to clean some things up. So my thought was, well, what's the formula? There has to be a formula to success. If my body is built on chemicals and everything on this earth is connected, which we all know it is, the earth is like 75 to 80% water for our bodies. Or 75 to 80 percent water everything goes through cycles we live in a cyclical world so there has to be a formula everything has a formula and and, and i said well what's the formula but I, I don't get it and then the acronym jumped out of, i mean god my god is, is different you all so i'm not talking about your god <laughs> i'm talking about mine i'm just letting you know mine a little different me and him we talk and i'm like look pops you know what, what's going on in he, he reveals things to me. He's like, we got a different relationship. And that WTF jumped out at me. And I said, hmm, what's the formula? And my guy, Coach Dimitri, he says, when he takes focus, he took the WTF to an entirely different level, which I totally agree on, because whatever you focus on will expand. And as I stated, everybody wants to be successful. And a lot of people are doing things to the inner night getting that breakthrough and they're wondering what's the formula what's the why why am i I, you know i'm i'm in the church i'm in the mosque i'm in the temple i'm i'm paying my tithes i'm helping people i'm I'm donating to the poor Uh, i'm I'm a great worker i'm a good parent but i haven't broken through what is the formula and that's what we teach you here at the wtf is what's the formula to success and we have different formulas that will break down this whole body and this mind to understand what takes your spirit higher because people are quick to say I'm I'm a spiritual person and I ask them then what's your ritual and they think well that's voodoo what you mean ritual no part of the word of spirit is ritual so if you're spiritual what is your ritual and they don't know how to answer that, but they we all have rituals. And we don't want to label it as that, but we have rituals, or you can call it habits. And you're known by your habits, and your habits are what's keeping you from being successful on the level that you want to be on. Because ask yourself this, do you think you have the same habits of someone that is a millionaire, someone that does have impact over millions? Or do you think you have the same habits? Or are you watching the same TV shows? Are you scrolling on your phone the same as those people that you look up to? And I, I, I'll, I'll answer that for you because this is rhetorical. You know you're not. 
You know you not playing. Stop playing yourself. You know you not. But 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 coach, you not. But you want the results though. But you don't have the right rituals. When we started yes. my diagnostic moments, I was very strategic in talking about habit formation. And the first episode, I think, or second, was called "Morning Rituals for Success." Because, and then I came back, I think the second episode was evening rituals for success. Because, I mean, people like Mindset Mastery, I'm like, oh yeah, Mindset Mastery is much easier than you think. Because Dr. Ellis, our teammate, he says that he can tell a lot about you by looking at, he can tell a lot about your habits based on the results you're getting. And when Coach E said, you you asking what's the formula, but you're not doing the same things. Okay, you want to be like Usher. You want to be like Coach E. You want to be like Dr. Lisa, but you're not putting in the work in your day-to-day habits and routines to equal that because it is a formula. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, it is a formula. So it's a hey, formula. Let me say this about the formula. And people can they can change interchange words, whatever works for you. So this is what works for me is what's the formula. And I like the media because I am I'm, I'm really in your face. Like what the you know, yes. like sometimes that's I, I ask my God that I'm, I'm like, dude, what's going on? Like what, what's up? What's the formula? I, 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 I desire this. And you know, people say, so be patient. I say I never pray for patience. I don't want to be patient. I want what I want right now, just like everybody else. But then I had to take a step back and say, okay, if I want it, am I doing what it takes? Because you can want, you can dream, and I believe in doing all of that. Use your imagination. But at the end of the day, it takes TMA, not TMI. Because everybody talks about too much information. It takes TMA. Taking massive action. You have to take massive action. And it, again, we play with these acronyms. And here's what I tell everyone. You can never hit a target that you don't see. You give me the greatest marksman in the world, a marksman, and tell them to hit this target and you don't show them the target, they'll never hit it. So I'm telling you, if you really want something, I need you to see the target in your mind. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands, as the great Steve Harvey once said. But again, you have to take action. That's part of the formula. And I have a cheer formula. Look, we don't, I don't know if they're ready for this cheer formula, Doctor Lisa. Wait, but wait, 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 wait. Because I'm still trying to catch up on on the other, the, the one you drop. Like, there's WTF. What's the second one? Because I need that to stick with massive action. Something. Come on, use that again. Women take focus. Take massive EMA. Wait, let me write this down. Women take focus. Do y'all understand why the movement that we have created is going to be something you don't want to miss? Because all of this right. is in that. Okay. I am right. making my notes. When it takes massive action. Ooh, give us the tier formula. Yes. yes. Uh, You're the doctor. Ooh. I'm I'm just the person who write your prescription. When you tell yes, me, I'm, the, I'm going to be your assistant today. <laughs> So, let me get my tambourine. These are my clappers. I like to clap for myself when I'm in my And I'm going to write notes in my special pen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the pen. That's awesome. So here's the third formula, you all. And it's an acronym also. Make sure you write this down. It's T-E-A-R. Just like two. And I asked everyone, I said, if, if you want to change your tears, you can either have tears of sadness, you can have tears of joy, or you have tears of a damn clown. So I want you to have these tears of joy. And there's a program, there's a formula that can change everything that you're doing. But here, here's what we have to realize before we even get to the formula. You have to think about what you think about. Yeah. I'm going to let that soak for a second. You have to think about what you think about. Why are you thinking about it? Oh, come on. Because there's a program running in the background that's 95% of what we do every day. Your little 5% of your conscious that has all these bright ideas and I want to do this, your 95% subconscious is saying, nope, we're going to stay in our comfort zones where dreams die. 
because we're habitual and we have these habits. And once we think about what we're thinking about, now we're conscious of it. We're conscious of the program that happened a long time ago. And you've been going through these cycles every day, doing the same thing every day, expecting a different result. And Einstein told you that's insanity. Like, we always use this. And we say, well, it's insanity to do the same things and expect different results. Look at what you're doing. The world is built on cycles. You go through seasons. The sun goes up, it goes down, the moon, everything goes in a cycle. We're from this earth. So being cyclical is part of our nature. But then once you examine that and become conscious of it and say, wait a minute, why am I thinking this way? Why am I going through the same thing over and over? Why am I chip off the old block? Why am I just like my parents when you're supposed to be better than the generation before you? That's how it was designed. That's how this whole world was designed for us to become better, not worse than the previous, or not just like the previous generation, because you can pick up some real bad traits. And we do this in uh, my book, <laughs> The How Not to Think and Grow Sick, which will be dropping within this first quarter. How Not to Think and Grow Sick. Because here's, here's why I say that. Three out of four beds are filled with patients who have EII, emotionally induced illnesses. They oh. literally thought themselves to be a sick. Oh, come on. And people don't know it. So you can literally say, well, my mother had cancer, my grandmother had cancer, so it's part of our genes, which is not true. Only 1% of what you do is hereditary. Come on Everything else is mental, and we pass it down to our children and say, well, you had cancer, you have cancer, we're going to keep cancer going. No, I see this kill it. We kill it with the thought, because the thought is the cause of it all. So the first T is your thoughts. Ooh, in the tear formula. Tear formula. Come on. Now, notes. it's a fact that... <laughs> It's the fact that we have between 60 to 100,000 thoughts that go through our head every day. And see, I got a big old head, so mine's probably double that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but uh, and some had to hold this big old brain, so, you know, I, I look funny when you get in here, but that's a whole different story. But listen, you all, your thoughts, where are they coming from? Well, oh, my goodness. So, what comes right after your thoughts is your emotions. Come on. Because here's the thing. If you have 60,000 thoughts, you're not thinking about all of them. You're only thinking about the ones you have an emotional connection to. Yes. And it could be from your past. Most of the times it is from it your is. past or it could be from yes. your future. But your EI, because everybody talks about AI, and I use AI as a tool just like a wrench. Yes. But your yes. EI is truly your superpower, and that's your emotional intelligence. intelligence. And no schools teach us this. So as we we have our thought, now we have an emotional connection to it. The A means we're taking action. The action may not be in the form of moving. The action could be right up here. Now you're thinking about that thought. You're thinking about the emotion that triggered that thought. Now your R is your reality or your results. So it's T plus E plus A equals R, your reality. Now, we can we, see, here's where we're going to get a little uh, grown up around here. Everybody likes a good P. <laughs> he said what he said. Every, every, every man, right? Every man by design, hey, right? Do, do women like the P too? We like do. The P too? Yeah, it's a different P, but, you know, like, yeah. Yep. We're talking it's about the words. Oh, just the letter. Let's focus. Just the letter. Yeah, let's just focus back to you. See, just he's speaking letter. above my level. So I have to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm going to take you on a ride, I promise. So Ooh. check this out. Wait, hold on. Let me make sure my secret okay. is secure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better, because here comes the juice. <laughs> oh. What's, what's pushing your tears right now? This, mm. The thoughts plus your emotions plus your action equals your reality is a program. And there's a lot of programs we've been programmed with. That's the big key that has you thinking the way that you're thinking. Think about this. Here's an example. Pick your most, the person you look up to the most. 
Do you think they have the same thoughts as you? No. They don't. They don't. Where did your thoughts come from? You were programmed from birth to the age of seven. Ninety-five percent of your program happened when you were a child. Now, once we know this programming, now we can reverse engineer it and say, I see you program. I'm going to be conscious of this program. I'm no longer on autopilot with this program. Now, I understand that this isn't normal. This is just what I've been programmed to do. But just like a TV, a television program, you got to turn the channel if you want to see something different. So if you want your reality to change, you got to change that dial and change that program. Now, if you just rip out the program, then now you have a void. And here comes your subconscious, that big 95% saying, uh-uh, I need no. to keep you in your comfort zone. Yes. If you're doing something different. Your body is saying, wait a minute. Uh, we're used to having alcohol and cigarettes and drugs. Like, what are you doing? You have craving. It's like, because we're Thank habitual. You. We're habitual. So, here's here's the big P. Now, that programming, we examine that programming and we start to bring in new programming. So, what you talked about with the morning routine and the evening routine, oh, my God. If, if you all could just get this part, I guarantee you, your life will change. Because what do you do in the morning most days? We Ooh, dread. On. We come wake on. up like, Lord, I got to go through this traffic. I got to deal with these knucklehead kids. They already up, running around, making noise. You know, I, I, the, the, the price of gas and the weather's going to be bad. Let me turn on the news so I can see who got murdered. Let me turn on the news to see what dumb, dumb politician is out here talking trash. Let me put all of this garbage in my face, in my body, in my mind before I even start my day. We do this every morning. Think about it, you are. Most mornings you wake up that way. And I'm saying you have to be strict about your morning routine and wake up differently. I wake up here. Let me give you an example because I don't like to just give people theory or, or you know, big words. I want to give you actionable things. Here's three things that you can do in the morning. First of all, Put, don't pick up that phone. There's nothing that happened between last night when you went to sleep to in the morning that you need to look at for the first time. Come on. Don't now. even look at your phone. Put it to the side. If you have a audible, if you have your favorite video, whatever it is, or mindset and success, because that's Come what on, you now. say you want is more success. So I need what you are, what you eat. I need you to eat more success if Come you want to become more successful. So the first thing in the morning, you got to have your audible ready. You got to have Dr. Elise's podcast out there. The WTF, What's the Formula podcast. podcast. All we have is gems. And, and, and your audibles, YouTube, they have them everywhere. Start your day off listening to that. And then once you get up, after you sat there for a minute, and now you're smiling because you're hearing great words, I need you to go in the mirror. Oh. And look at yourself and be like, mm. oh, you look good today, boy. Look at that egg. That egg is shining today. You know, you, you look all right. You know, I need you to, even if it's a lie, even if you butt ugly, <laughs> I don't care. You need to tell yourself you look good. You woke up today because guess what? There's over 100,000 people that die every single night that don't wake up. You woke up. But that alone. Give yourself props. That's a win. Remember when we said winning takes focus? There are small wins that we take for granted every single day. And the more that we focus on these wins, the more these wins will show up. People know about the car analogy. As soon as you buy a vehicle, what happens? As soon as you get gifted, anytime you get a new vehicle, what happens every single time? You cannot deny it. Every single time, what happens? As soon as you buy it, and you start to focus on that vehicle, it starts popping up everywhere you go. The same color, the same make, the same model. It's like, man, i never seen this many cars until I got this one. Am I the only one that that happened to? You all know I'm talking to you. If you've ever had a vehicle that you purchased and you focused on that vehicle, did you or did you not see that vehicle all over the place? Like, I keep seeing the same. Why? 
What did you do? You started to focus on it. You never focused on it until you had it. And what I'm saying, if you start focusing on these wins and focusing on success, it's going to reveal itself. It's sitting right there in your face the whole time. Those cars been there the whole time before you got yours and started focusing on it. And what I tell everyone, winning takes focus. You want to win? You want to be successful? You've got to focus on it. Oh. I ain't well, done, but I'm going to pause is, right there. I, we can't <laughs> drop our mics because then we will disrupt the recording. But that is the mic drops. Okay. You all understand. Just so I, let, we did a couple conversations. We did a conversation about a month and a half ago online when we first met. So let me tell you all something. And I've watched a few pieces and parts of his episodes. I've cruised around his website just a little bit. But I did not know the depth of all the formulas that he just spit out. But I want you to understand what he just said is winning takes focus, right? So with my intention set to attract the right people and get rid of the wrong ones. Because for me, it's a seasonal. Like there's some people who've been around who needed a purge, no hard feelings, no fallouts, just less time invested in those relationships and connections. And I was set my intention to bring the right people. Do y'all see? Because I know a lot of y'all listen to the podcast over and over. Do y'all see how without me even trying, I literally was focused on me being successful in building this podcast to something where people can literally master the way they think that brought this brother into the DMs, as he said earlier, and how he is lining and layering it up with what I have brought, and we had Dr. Kareem, and then we had uh, Mr. Akeem Shannon, and now him. Last week, we had Deb live in the studio, but none of them are saying anything. We sat and planned. These episodes are not pre-scripted. They are just humans who are understand the power of the mindset. And we come together, we say yes, because there are a lot of, let me tell you guys, God has been good and I thank him, but there's a lot of people who are stacked from now till May to be on this podcast and none of them I have reached out and say, hey, would you be on the podcast? It's like we met and we know I'm going to be on your podcast and I'm like, you're going to be on my podcast. The end. We come up here. But when it takes focus and what you focus on will grow. Oh my gosh, listen guys, we are going to take a break because first of all, I need to catch my little spiritual breath and the little tiny notepad I have here will run out of pages. Look, I can't make this up, guys. Look, I've been taking notes from Coach E and I'm like, okay, thank God there's a script, there's a podcast, there's a place where all this goes and I'll get the notes because I can't keep up. My fingers are dry, my, my throat is just choked up from all this feeding. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Oh my goodness, guys. We are back from our first segment of this phenomenal episode. But before we go any further, let me tell you a little bit about this genius mindset disruptor that just entered into our sphere via Mindset Master Moments. Let me tell you that my brother, Ernest, has a master's degree in managing information technology. He was named the Technical Student of the Year in 2011 for Missouri in Kansas. He is a global ambassador proudly of Mindset Master 360 movement and he is one of our thought leaders as well. He proudly represents the USA on the international stage that God is allowing us all to bring together. Ernest has accomplished author of three books that are charismatic. He's also the charismatic host of WTF. And you all know what's the formula and women takes focus. What's the formula podcast? And he boasts over 15 years of impactful leadership in corporate America. His dynamic speaking ability, as you heard him, sets him apart, inspiring, motivating, and transforming lives. We are digging into his bit of backstory in this segment. Ernest, you, my brother, have dropped 159 million billion gems at this point in less than 30 minutes. But you didn't just stumble on this mindset. You talked about those 
that the formative years of our programming being between one and seven and that we need to unprogram and then reprogram to the formula for success and a lot of people hear success and we'll talk about that they hear success and they think money yeah that too but that's the end result of what you said and what we agree on on this podcast is ritual routines habits you said you got to think the thoughts you think about which is i I mean it's a virgin like listen how did you what was your programming like between your one to seven how did that shift over time just take us back a little bit because you see a lot of our listeners bro they're listening and they're like of course it's easy for dr elisa why how the stuff she's done and studied and accomplished of course <laughs> Ernest, he's got a master's degree he's been top student for kansas and missouri like of course it's easy mm-hmm. for them to sit on this microphone and, and go on and on about success and the right mindset. But they don't know what I've been through. They don't have a clue what I've been through. I came from the hood. I came from the streets. And it's been tough out here. I'm still on the streets. Tell them. Let's bust oh. their bubble here <laughs> for a bit. Because you are living, breathing what I live and breathe for. So tell us. Tell us, bro. Let's disrupt their mindset. Listen, you know, like, this is, uh, if you think this is the easy part, it is. <laughs> because me growing up, uh, I wrote a book called Poverty. Mm-hmm. Meaning anything you can imagine in poverty, I went through with life size. Gas, electric, all of that. Washing clothes in the tubs, heating up water on the stove, like lighting candles. Like I did all that. Hungry. They used to tell me all the time. Oh, uh, my mom hungry. She would say, uh, "Drink a big cup of water. You make it to the morning. You better not piss in the bed." All right, damn. <laughs> so <laughs> we oh my and, and shout out to my mom. By the way, shout she out. had four. Hey, yeah, mama. She had four boys. I was the oldest, and I remember standing in the church to cook and do dishes while my mom was trying to work. And if you all know, like, I, I'm, you know, I may look 25, but uh, I'll be 48 by the time y'all see this. Young. So, I, you know, back in the 70s, you know, in the 80s, you know what the I'm talking best about. Days. Right? The best days. Yeah, yeah, right? The simple days. Um, and, you know, I come, I'm a biracial person. Uh, my mom uh, is white. My dad was black. And uh, so I dealt with racism on both sides of the track. Black people were racist to me because I was the light-skinned guy. You know, and light-skinned dudes is soft. And a light-skinned dudes. So I had to knuckle up, you know, growing up. Because we grew up in the hood. And I, when I say the hood, I mean the projects and the trailer park. I was poor white trash and ghetto. All at once. It just depends on where we live. But those were the two options. I was either in the trailer park or I was in the projects. And both of them, I had to fight because I'm the light skinned guy. And everybody thinks they can whoop the light skinned dude. But they don't know. I'm good because I was a little bigger for my size. So I had to fight the grown me and my mom's boyfriends. I done knuckled up with a few of them because I'm the oldest. So I'm thinking I'm I'm the man of the house. And we never had a father around. I, last time I saw my father, I was five years old on Christmas. And he's dead right now. And he brought me gifts for Christmas and things, and I never seen him again, never talked to him again, never heard from him ever again from the age of five. And that was in 1981. <laughs> so I grew up without a father. And I and my children right now, which I have five children, my children right now know that no matter what, I'm never gonna leave their side. I don't care what the baby mama, which I hate that term, what their mother uh says, does, or tries to eat, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be there for my children. The only thing that I learned from my dad, who passed uh, since then, is don't ever leave your children. So men, no matter what you go through, don't leave your child's side, even if you have to fight for joint custody, whatever you need to do, be in that child's life, because they need you. Even if mama's saying, I don't need no man for nothing, and all this, that, and other, yes, they do. It's a lie. 
than they do. That's, the, that's the way we're designed. But again, I grew up very poor, but we were happy. Like, we were happy kids and, and bad. And, and, and when, when I say I was the rebel, I was the, uh, the, the, I don't know, the black sheep or the black sheep. <laughs> My wife would tell you I'm the light skinned, blackest person she ever met. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and, and, and I take that as a compliment. Thank you very much. But uh, I never accepted the terms of being poor. And, and I said, you know what, Mama, I'm, I'm going to do something with my life. I'm, I'm going to get us up out of the hood. And I'm tired of being broken. I'm tired of being poor. And my little brothers look up to me like a dad. So they wanted to follow my lead. Now, unfortunately, uh, I grew up during the gang bang crack epidemic. <laughs> and I'm laughing about it now, but uh, by this time, I'm known for the, that life skin dude can throw his hands. So I have respect in the hood. And I've always been pretty smart when it came to math. And math was my thing. I count numbers. I'm still good right now. Um, and drugs hit. Now, I had some uncles and uh, a stepfather that was often known, but he was the closest thing to a father that I had. And crack took them down. And when I say down, took everything they ever had. Now, the only people that I looked up to are now crackheads. So I'm thinking I can't look up to a crackhead because these guys is begging for a $10 rock. And now I'm seeing the guys in the hood that I used to go to school with. They got gold teeth in their mouth, big chains and and rings, and I'm like, wait a minute, what y'all doing? And they so what's their drugs. formula? So, what's their yeah, formula? Yeah, what's like? the formula to that? Like, what the? <laughs> so, I want to know because I was always that kid that asked those questions and I never accepted poverty. My mom would Man. send me to the neighbor to go knock on the door, see if they got some shoes. I wouldn't even knock, I just stand out there. I'm too proud to knock on that door. I ain't knocking. I get all type of whoopings. Boy, well, I used to get beat. <laughs> I don't even oh, want to talk about that. I no. got whooped so much to where I stopped crying. My mom was like, I can't even whoop you no more. You won't even cry. <laughs> That's yes. how hard hit I was. So, uh, but anyway, we're in the hood and I started selling drugs. And, uh, and at the age of 16, I had four vehicles and I was living in my own apartment. And I had like 12 guys selling crack for me. And I'm not bragging about that. I'm saying this is how my mind was in the hood. So anybody out there in the hood saying, yeah, I'm stuck in the hood. Listen, all of that that I did, and I accumulated a lot of, I was ghetto rich, if you want to call it that, in the 90s. And that ghetto rich got me what my hand called for. And that was a 20-year sentence at the age of 18. I'm going to let that sink in. I had a 20-year prison sentence at the age of 18 years old. That's after being in juvenile, being in jail, all those different things led me to that. And to make a long story short, I did 12 years incarcerated from the age of 18. All of my 20s gone. I didn't get the the, 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 the 21 birthday where you can buy liquor. And, you know, it, all of my 20s are gone. Wow. I got out of prison in my 30s. Mm. Are y'all, listen, are y'all hearing this? For those who <laughs> I have accused of accusing us of having this perfect picture life, you see this yeah. powerful man sitting here. He's telling you there was a program in and gifts and talents that were transformed into a good old hustle that landed him where he lost all his 20s. And he did yes. not resume hanging out with the rest of us cuckoo heads. <laughs> Until he was in his thirties, and you did the math. He did tell us his age. He's not like some of the people, some of us who hide our age. I don't hide my age. I'm forty three years old. I'm blessed. I have seen time. I have a lot of childhood mates that did not make this age. They've been gone for years, for decades. At this, you look amazing. But so, how, thank you so much. How on earth, though? You know, this was what blew my mind when I met you. I'm like, okay, the math is math. The formula is got to be a really good formula because 
he redeemed the time. You see, excuse me while we get a little ritual spiritual on you, right, bro? This God that we serve, because your God and my God, he does different stuff with you, right? But like he does different stuff with me. I be thinking I'm his MVP. I'm his very special one and all the stuff he saved me from. But here you come showing out, showing all the way out. He redeemed the time because all these formulas and lives that are transformed and now you're taking it global. How the heck did you do that after all those years? Now, I'm not giving up. We're not pausing. Y'all hang on. Here we go. Tell us, brother. Please tell us. So, who the world meets this? <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna ask everyone out there. Are you truly a believer in God? Because mm. if you're not, then I'm not really talking to you. But those Ooh. that say they are believers, I'm talking to you right now. From mm. what I hear, and you can, and this is biblical in the Quran, sixty percent of the Quran is about Jesus. So on, we uh, we're not even going there with the Differences and all that. Oh, religion. We're talking about the story. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care nothing about that. Here's what I'm saying: is there's knowledge in all of the books, and, and one of the books says uh, the, the great Jesus, who I call my big brother. Uh, <laughs> he he said that the worst of you will be greater than what I've ever done. And I know I'm butchering that up, but it's in the Bible. You all, you know, you heard this, but. <laughs> He said, the worst of you, all you have to do is believe. Yeah. And I'm sitting right here thinking, like, my God is so great and so dynamic. He said he's within me. Hmm. So even when I was in prison, I never felt like I was less than. Because if I did, then I would be saying my God is less than. So I ask you again, do you really believe in God? Because your God today is not your God from yesterday. Because as you unfold, your God unfolds. So think about that. As you unfold, your God unfolds. You need to build a better relationship. So your God will strengthen you unless you don't believe. Do you believe he weak? Do you believe he wants you to be in poverty? Do you believe that he wants you to lose and everything? Do you believe he wants you to be cheated on? Do you believe that? Because if you do, and again, I'm not even talking to you, and I apologize if this is offensive at all, I, I, but I don't. <laughs> because I know a great God that we all talk about. You gotta worship God. You gotta, and I believe in that one thousand percent. And you know this. You know this, Doctor Lisa. I call her a goddess, and I call myself a god. Why? Because we're made in His image and after His likeness. Little G O D. So yeah. that's right. So if we have God within us, how dare you complain about the day? How dare you complain about what this world is throwing at you? Because here's what's happening. You're calling it upon yourself. We are our own worst enemies. We always want to say, well, the devil is busy. The devil on the move. Man, the devil ain't nothing but what you say he is. Yeah. So if you don't want the devil to keep on working in your life, stop saying what he's doing. Yes, what you focus on. We bring, yes, we put life into it. I say he's a punk and he's up under the heel of my foot. So I don't have those type of issues and things with devils. And, and I've walked through the worst, just like my big brother Jesus did. And I'll flip a table over too. Because I've been around some of these shysty folks that's taking yes. people for their money, that's yes. out here scheming. And, and they talk to me. These sharks, as they call themselves, and they got the nice suits on and the Lamborghinis and the Rolls Royces and all these sharks. And then that orca roll up on them. For those that don't know, look up that orca. That's that okay. killer whale. That's and when the killer. sharks see that orca, they say, oh, no, we, we got to run. You better get on the way because, you know, I ain't going for it. You're not going to keep taking my people down through there because I got some for them. I had these sharks even tell me, don't give them too much, bro. You got to sell them on that. Make them pay for it. I said, listen, I serve a great guy that anything I want, he going to give it to me. And I'm going to serve every person. I don't care if they're the janitor, the person at the gas station. I go to St. Vincent de Paul right now. There's homeless people down there that I pour everything I got into. 
and they don't give me a penny. And I don't expect a penny. But these sharks out there, y'all better watch out. This orchestra is on the scene. And you see me on these stages. The last stage I was on, I'm going to shut up after this. The last stage I was on, I was around some sharks. And when I left that stage, I left it a blaze because when I walked through the fire, the flames arise and they raise up even more. And the whole crowd was jumping out their seat. And the people that came after me said, I don't even know what to say after that. Yeah, because you lying and you are trying to sell the people on some bull crap mindset stuff. When mindset is great, but a broke clock is right twice a day. That don't mean your mind is set right. You just got it right twice a day. Let me be quiet, y'all. It's getting hot because I need to put my fan on. Where, where's my fan, you all? Get the fan in here. Turn on the ceiling fan in here. Oh, listen, all that you just said, <laughs> and it's so much confirmation about who you choose to be on your team. I remember having that conversation with you because everybody who knows me and is listening to this podcast right now, they're like, oh, that's her people. And let me tell you from, because they're like, he's saying all the things she say, he's saying it his way, but that's all the stuff she talks about. Yeah. And I remember when I met you, like, okay, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be one of the leaders of our Mindset Master 360 Global Community. And I said, Ernest, I just know. And I said, Ernest, all the people who are the Global Impact Employees, the people I've known for three years, four years, some of them, most of them have been in the trenches with me. And even I'm a Global Impact Employee. Even, you know, we, that's all, that's the highest level in our community leadership. At this point, we're always going to lead, but it's that oneness of mind yes, yes. and the disruption. And that's why he mm. said he saw, let's say, number one mind's a disruptor. Uh, I need to Ooh. know who she is. How dare she? Because you are a disruptor. You are a disruptor, yeah. King. And and that is the people who I work and do business with. Because what he just said is, I was given a purpose. I yes. went through all this stuff. And I was given a purpose. And I will not de- demise the gift and talents, abilities to think and calculate and formulate systems and programs and formulas that are needed for humanity to shift and change and demise it to a penny. And y'all have to understand, no one has to give me anything for me to come on this podcast week after week. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what, if I ever, if you sit and look at my schedule and what I do, this podcast can be called an inconvenience. There are people in my circle that said, what's your mission with the podcast? I said, to get the message out. And I thought it was going to be just me because I'm like, that's what keeps it simple, right? That means I just get up with my head a mess and put my bonnet on and just get the mic and get the message out. And God is like, uh-uh, because how did I know? Because he kept sending everybody my way of like mind. And then the podcast rating keeps jumping all over the world. And people who I would never know are coming through and they want to be on the podcast. And when I sit with them, they got the message. And the message sounds even bigger and better. It makes my little voice in the dark amplifies. And I'm like, yes, God, I'm going to do it. Yeah, we got some sponsorship. We got some ads and things and all that's cooking up. Somebody best come in here and fix all that because I don't have time for it. But like I said, the message and my purpose is what my brother just said. The message and the mess, the message and what God has told me to is bigger than a penny because he will provide it. I hope, listen, he said a lot, but I want to stick that point. I want to stick that point. I'm not over here telling anybody to give away. We're not saying that, right, bro? We're not saying to just give everything away for free, but why not? We probably say that too because what you're willing to give for free, somebody comes out and pay you for. There's no nothing new under the sun. And we're talking to all these other coaches. You see Big E and, and, and a Dr. Elisa, we're coaches. I'm going to let you jump in because I'm going off. This is what I want to say about that giving, giving away. Anybody out there, write this down. Whatever you want, give it away. Give it away. 
If you want some money, give some money away. If you want some love, give some love away. If you want some success, make someone else successful around us. We live in this cyclical world, you all. It's going to come back. I promise you. Boomerang. And it's going to come back tenfold. But you, we sitting up holding everything to ourselves. And we're choking the life out of our gift. We're choking the life. And when there's so many people around you that need what you got, they need this podcast. And yes. some of them can't afford this podcast. Right. Or the whole program and the coaching. They might not be able to afford it. But they can afford to listen to this podcast. It's free everywhere. Life. Because yes. guess what happens? Now they're speaking Dr. Elisa's name. And there's a law. We always talk about the law of attraction, which I, I the law of attraction is real. That I, I love the law of attraction. But there's a senior law called the law of vibration. And the more people that say your name, that causes a vibration in this universe. And now you're going to increase just by having people say your name. Come on. So get the vibrate because what the guy say in Genesis, he said in the beginning was the word. Yes. And God was with the word. And the word was God. And the more words you put out there to help people, everything around you is going to improve. Come on. Everything around you is going to increase. And uh, I don't know if the God I serve, he didn't make me diamonds for for the the, the bad folks. Okay, he too. made diamonds for us. Yes. <laughs> so we, I agree with, you know, being your paper. I, I agree with getting your diamonds because they were put here for us. They wasn't yes. put here for these knuckleheads. They were put here for us that yes. do great things. But yes. if you want things around you to improve, you do need to give it away. It's yes. not yours okay. until you give it away. Huh? And you know what? Here's what I'm facing. I know we got to go to commercial real quick. And this, some of you not for profits, churches, schools, please stop doing this. You have a great formula. You have a great program, and you're afraid to put it out there because you think somebody's going to steal it. I'm sorry. It ain't original anyway. Come on. This stuff been going on from day one. You just saying it different. I'm saying it different. It's been going on. So you want to hold your little pearl yeah. and say, I don't want nobody to know about it because they might steal my idea. They copyright it. Trademark what you're doing if you're afraid of that. But you need to put it out there because it's all about impact and creating these vibrations. And ooh, once things start vibrating, oh, you better get ready. That's where your prosperity lies. Oh, listen, before listen, I remember my first two episodes. Someone I'm close to listened to it and called me up and said, "Girl, girl, you just give a whole therapy session." on that podcast. Do you know you could be selling that stuff? I'm like, yeah, it is packaged to sell. But everybody can't pay for it, so I had to find a simple way of making sure it goes. What is my message worth if no one hears it? There you go. There you go. Do you know that the same Louis Vuitton bag is the same bag you can get at Target <laughs> by the right. same manufacturer with a different sticker on it? Just just listen to what bro said. Bro said, he said that it's not new anyway, silly. You just say it a different way. And if people don't know, listen, coaches, let's disrupt. Y'all need to play what he just said and come back right here. If you sitting on this, all this straight, I know some of my peers and I, y'all could be mad at me, but I'm going to say, y'all sitting there talking about, oh, I can't put my podcast in Apple because I got to find the trademark. Oh, I can't put. And then here comes Dr. Elisa. Oh, we doing podcast today? All I got is my phone. I'm I got these microphones and things set up, but I ain't got time for that because God said do it, and I do it now. I post it on my social media. I'm like, okay, well, hello, welcome to Minds and Mastery Moments with Dr. Elisa. And I record with the AirPods that I've had for 102 years, and I put it out. And then I was like, oh wait, we got to make sure it goes everywhere. Oh, distribute it, and I bet y'all can't tell the difference. Of the audio because you didn't care what I sound like because you got the message about your habits need to change. And you had to because within the fourth week of the podcast, the podcast was number 80 something on the charts around the world. 
and it maintains that in all these countries because we are here to tell you. She said, I was giving a whole therapy session and I'm like, okay, well, whatever. She said, I can make a lot of money. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But I said, yeah. I'm just going to do this anyway. Listen, guys, we are telling you what the formula is to success. Because you see, success starts here and then it comes and it resonates in your body. As my brother was sharing, the law of resonance, which supersedes the law of attraction. Because we talk about, oh, you attract. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are your, your energy. You, I don't want no drama in my life. No, you don't. But everybody got drama. So you, you have drama in your life. You just have to have the right mindset. And you have to vibrate at high energy where you resonate and it drowns out the drama and the noise. Listen, we, we, we have to take a break. This is a two-part episode. So you guys, we're taking a break and we'll be right back after these messages. Well, Disruptors, this is exactly where we have to end the first episode with Coach Big E, Ernest Moss. It has been such a refreshing, fiery episode, and I am so glad that you're tuned in. Well, you're going to have to listen to the second episode. You can't wait to listen to the second episode. And I promise you that Coach E, Coach Big E does have a special gift for you, but you'll learn more about it at the end of the second episode. But for now, I encourage you to go ahead and follow Coach E. Go to WTFMA.com or go to his YouTube channel, WTFMEN Academy. And you will find him there. Just type in WTF Academy and you'll find him on YouTube. You'll find him on all social media. And yes, the second episode is even more fiery and impactful than the first one. I am Dr. Lisa White and I thank you for being a part of Mindset Mastery Moments. Go ahead and click the button in the description and join the movement. What are you waiting for? www.mindsetmastery360.org is where you can join the movement and learn from and rub shoulders with enlightened taught leaders like Ernest and Deb Holt, Dr. Kareem R. Ellis, and so many others from across the globe. This podcast is only just getting started. We've got some amazing guests lined up for our future episodes that have already been recorded, and we can't wait for you to hear it. Tag in to part two. We are so honored and blessed to have you as part of our listening community from around the world. We see the numbers, we see the geographic locations, and I am grateful. Our team at MM, we are grateful. So continue. If you'd like to support us, click the link that's also in the description to become a part of our community. That's the bonus where you'll get the masterminds and all the wonderful things we have planned for our Mindset Mastery Moments listening community. Disruptors, I wanna remind you that everything begins with your thought. How really is your mindset? How we think is what we speak, what we speak is what we do, what we do, we do repeatedly, and that determines the results we get. Think, speak, do, become. Until next episode, I wish you love, light, peace, and blessings, and I'm out. Bye.